In today's video, I'm going to try some stuff that I have never done before. Wish me luck. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. To start things off, I'm building this old Hasegawa Learjet. The instructions are pretty basic, and it looks like there's going to be a few things that you just kind of have to guess on. The parts look like they're in pretty good shape, though. Looks like there's some raised panel lines, too, which is kind of a bummer. Oh, well. The decals are kind of old and crappy. So this kit comes with some interior parts like seats and bulkheads, which is cool. I found some reference pictures online and some of these jets are quite fancy. I tried to replicate some of the shiny wooden panels I saw in some of the pictures using different brown colors and then adding a gloss coat at the end. They turned out okay. So while I was painting the interior and putting it all together, I thought it would be a shame to put all this work into the interior and not be able to see it. So I got an idea. Light bulb. I'll add light bulbs. That should be cool, right? Well, so if I'm going to light the interior, I should probably do all of the lights. So this project is just going to keep getting more complicated. <laughs> After finishing most of the interior stuff, it was time to work on some of the exterior. I used a Sharpie to mark all of the raised panel lines. I got this trick from some car modeler YouTube channels where they use the Sharpie to mark mold lines so they can sand them smooth. That was my idea, to sand the panel lines smooth and then rescribe them. But I gave up on rescribing pretty quick. Uh, that was not fun. Trying to scribe around a cylinder shaped object is not fun. Next up were the windows. The window plastic was a little warped and so looking through them the image was kind of distorted. And when you stick them into the fuselage they stick out. They're not flush with the outside. So to solve that, I held the windows in place as best I could, and then I tried to sand them flush with the outside of the fuselage. Once I got them flush, I used some really fine grit sanding sponges to get them as clear as possible. Then I used some Tamiya polishing compound to buff out all of the scratches and make them as shiny as possible. It didn't work as well as I would have hoped, but it's good enough. You can see through the windows. Anyways, the inside of the window pieces needed to be painted to match the color palette of the interior. That means I had to come up with a way to mask the window areas. Another light bulb. I had another idea. So my wife has one of those fancy cricket, cry cut, cricket, cricket, vinyl cutter thingies. So I measured the size of the windows and made some mask templates and then I used her machine to cut them out. And they worked pretty good. Another thing I thought would make it look cool is if I could lower the wing flap thingies. They're molded in place and so you can't adjust them. So I used a razor saw and I cut those off. Razor saws come in really handy for this kind of work because they don't eat up a lot of the plastic.
Next, I had to do some more surgery on the exterior. The exterior lights don't come as separate clear pieces. They are molded with the rest of the parts. And since I wanted to light this up, I had to remove those lights on the wings and on the landing gear and on the tail. I just had to cut those off so that I could put a hole there for lights. I also had to dig out some trenches inside the tail and under the wings for the wires. I bought these pre-wired SMDs. Uh, I think SMD stands for surface mounted diode, I think. Tiny little light bulbs and they were perfect for this. They're really small, but they give off a good amount of light for this scale. Um, I made sure to test them multiple times while I was working. You know, nothing would be worse than having a light stop working after you glue your model together. That would suck. Once all my light locations were planned out, I went ahead and glued in the SMDs everywhere. For the internal cabin, I used a small strip of LEDs, and then for the rest of the lights, I used those small SMDs. So now that I have all these lights in here, how am I gonna get power to the model without a battery, or without having wires sticking out of it somewhere? Great question, glad you asked. I had an idea. When you go to the airport, sometimes you see these little weird cart thingies that are plugged into planes. I think they're called like ground power units. I don't know much about them other than sometimes they're needed to charge batteries or help start engines. So I got the idea that I could just make one and then I could run my wire from my jet to the cart and then run the wire from the cart into a diorama base. So I made a hole in the back of the plane not exactly sure if this is where a connection like this would go on the real plane, but it's my model, so I can do whatever I want. To wire everything up, I was going to need several different circuits. The lights on the interior need to be on all the time. Same thing with the landing gear lights. Then I need some strobe lights and some other blinky bits. So I needed separate circuits for each one. And then I soldered them to a main wire that I could run out of the plane. Once I had all of my lights soldered and ready to go, it was time to start putting everything together with the major assembly parts. After getting the wings and the fuselage put together, it was time to put in the windshield, which fit pretty good. I used some masking tape and some liquid mask to mask off the windshield for painting. I used all clad gloss black since I wanted to have the frames look like bare metal like they do on the real plane. The leading edges on the wings and some of the other parts of the plane also needed to have a bare metal look so those got the same treatment. I 
made some more vinyl masks for the outside of the windows so that they could have the same metal frame look. Then it was time to paint the rest of the stuff. It's a white plane, so that was pretty simple. Paint it all white. So after that, that was a lot of work. I needed a break. So I hopped onto the computer to do some research on these aviation ground power unit thingies. I found this one company, Effetti, Effetti, Effetti. I was going to put him in, uh, put, excuse me. Yeah, I don't know how to say it. But their website has some of their products on it, including their GPU thingies. I found this one. It looked nice, and it even had a blueprint with measurements. It looked perfect. I booted up Blender, which is a free 3D modeling and animation program. I've been using it for several months, learning how to model. So I used the blueprints from the website to build a cart. And I think I did a pretty good job. So having a nice digital 3D model of a cart is great, but that doesn't help me in the real world. Amazon to the rescue again. I got the Anycubic Photon Mono X 3D printer. As you can see, it comes well packaged and it looks cool. You can even like press buttons on it and stuff. So cool. So I followed all the instructions that I've learned from the internet and from the user guide and I tried to print my cart. My first attempt produced this resin brick. No idea why I did that. It looks like the whole screen was just exposing the whole time. I didn't actually expose the layers correctly. So. This is how big the screen is. Anyways, I reset the printer and tried printing it again and it worked. How cool is this? I built something on my computer and now it exists in the real world. I am definitely gonna be using this with my hobby in the future. So all these pieces, they came out pretty good. I still need to learn a lot about exposure and tolerances because some of the pieces didn't fit together as well as they did on my computer. Uh, I even broke the cover part when I was trying to remove the printer supports, but that's what CA glues for. And it's my first time, I'm learning. I went ahead and primed and painted all my 3D parts. It was just gonna be all nice and white and plain, just like the plain, plain, not plain. Unfortunately, I didn't have any of those effity, 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 I didn't have any manufacturer decals to make it look like the real thing, so I had to improvise. I had a bunch of leftover decals from my last build, the AMK F14. If you haven't seen that build, I'll leave a link to it somewhere on the screen right now so you can check it out. Anyways, I had a whole bunch of extra decals from that kit, some pinstripes and some warnings and other things that I thought would look cool, but I also needed some kind of manufacturer logo. Then I found this little star decal and this constellation decal. Perfect. I used them to make a fictitious manufacturing company and I think it looks great now. After that I started adding the decals on the jet. I got these aftermarket decals made by Caracal models. So much better than the kit decals and what's cool about these, they turn your average commercial Learjet 35 into a United States Air Force C-21. The set comes with several markings to choose from. Naturally, I chose the one from the Connecticut Air National Guard because lightning bolts, of course, lightning bolts are cool. After all the decals were added, I applied several gloss coats of Mr. Color Super Clear 3 over the whole thing. Then I did some sanding with some 2500 grit sanding sponges. Then I polished everything with some more Tamiya polishing compound. I used some clear UV curing resin to make the light bulb thingies on the outside of the jet. Once all of those were done, I went over a few places with a panel wash.
Now to work on the base, I grabbed some acrylic paste and added some paint, Mod Podge and water and made a disgusting goo. Then I wiped it all over a piece of particle board. Once it was dry, I primed it and then I scribed in some lines to make it look like concrete. I airbrushed several colors to try to make it look more real. <laughs> Hopefully I get better at this in the future because I'm kind of disappointed on how the paint turned out. Anyways, moving on. Having a plain concrete base seemed a little boring, so let's make a hanger as a backdrop. To do this, I started off by framing it out with some balsa wood. This was actually a lot of fun. I got to try out a new tool I've been wanting to play with for a while. It's called the Chop It from Micromark, I think it is. It has a razor blade on a lever thingy, and you can use it to cut thin pieces of wood and styrene and other stuff. So yeah, that was fun. The hanger is going to need some windows. So I modeled some window frames in Blender so that I could play with my 3D printer again. I also got the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station to go along with the 3D printer, which is a must if you're gonna be doing a lot of 3D printing because you have to wash all of the excess resin off of your parts before you finish curing them. Once the window frames were printed, I glued them to the hanger frame. I put some windows on top of the doorway, and then I put some windows on each individual door. Once that was done, I covered all of the framing with cereal box pieces and tape. Most of the pictures I've seen of airplane hangers show that they're actually just covered in corrugated metal. So I went to the dollar store and picked up this disposable aluminum cooking pan thingy. I cut out some pieces from the aluminum and then did my best to flatten them out. After that, I used this paper corrugator thingy that I found on Amazon and ran the metal pieces through it. It worked for the most part, but it didn't always make the corrugations exactly the same on every piece. So you can definitely tell at the end that some of the pieces just don't fit together very good, but I did my best. And it's my first time building a diorama anyways, so I can only get better from here. Also, the corners looked really bad, so I made some trim with some sheet styrene. I forgot to mention I also modeled some lighting fixtures and I put those above the doorway as well.
once the hanger was all painted, I added some more SMDs into those light fixtures that I 3D printed and I glued them into place with some UV resin. I used the plastic cover from that baking tray thingy to make the windows. I glued them in with just some regular white glue. I put a LED strip inside of the hanger so that the windows would light up. The windows ended up being really clear and you can see the wires and all of the guts inside of the hanger. So I misted some transparent white over the inside of the windows. Uh, it did not turn out very good as you can see, but I've learned my lesson. Now it was time to figure out the layout of the diorama. I put all the pieces on the base to get an idea of how I wanted it to look. Then I drilled out some holes for all the wires. So now that we're on the home stretch, it's time to add all of the small details. Here comes the hard part, the wiring. I had to thread the main wire from the jet through the cart cover, then down through the cart base, and then from that into the diorama base, then under the base, and then back inside the hanger. That took a while. I should have made bigger holes. To control the lights, I bought this Elegoo brand Arduino board. I learned some basic programming from another YouTube channel, uh, Ostrich Longneck. He was kind enough to make a whole playlist on how to do some really cool things with these Arduino boards for models. Once I got all the wires connected to it and made sure everything was working, I added a back cover using some poster board paper. Just hot glued it on. And that was the last step. Now onto the final reveal. If you find my videos useful or entertaining, please consider subscribing and commenting below. It would really help my channel grow. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and until next time. <laughs>